Welcome to Unsightly Opinions. My name's Tamara. Today, I want to chat with you about my employment experience. If you're looking for a video about how to find work, some suggestions on jobs, work from home opportunities, or starting a business, I have already done videos on that. I will link those at the top of the description. Today is more of a personal story with my own employment journey. Some of the employers that I've found to be fantastic, some employers that have been horrible, interviews that I've gone on that have gone really well, some that have been downright discriminatory, and just to share that with you. So if you're looking for employment right now, I'm hoping that you can find some words of wisdom, some gems, maybe something to commiserate with. And if you aren't looking for employment, if you don't have a disability, maybe it'll share a different perspective that you're not familiar with when it comes to looking for work. I have worked in many different careers in the last 10 years of my life. I've been searching for things that fill me up, that bring me joy, that aren't stop gaps looking for something else. I'm somebody who needs a lot of challenge. I'm somebody who needs a lot of variety. I'm someone who needs to feel fulfilled at the end of the day. But today's not a about that. Today is talking about how I found employment, how I found my various jobs, and what I did to help get me there. I started looking for work when I was around 12 or 13. Most of my friends, my older cousins, were all getting part-time jobs after school for some extra spending money. They were working in customer service, at clothing retailers, they were working at fast food restaurants, they were working at the grocery store, and I thought, hey, I want to do that. I applied for what must have been over 50 different positions in my community. At the grocery store, at fast food retailers, at sit-down restaurants. I applied for just about every entry-level position I could find that I felt that I could do the work. I got not one interview. And I think I know the reason why. I not only listed that I was blind on my resume, but I also told employers that I was legally blind when I spoke to them on the phone for setting up an interview. When I went in to drop off my applications, I had my white cane. There was more than one occasion when I'd go into a grocery store or a fast food restaurant to drop off my application, they'd see the white cane and say, you know, you can drop this off with me, but I don't think we can hire you. And I said, well, why not? Are you hiring right now? They said, well, yes, we're hiring, but I don't think you can do the work because you're blind. Well, that is absolutely illegal to do because that is blatant discrimination against somebody with a visual impairment. It happened a lot. By the time I was 14 and most of my friends were in part-time work, I was starting to feel really self-conscious. I started feeling like I was worthless because I couldn't find employment. My first job was working as a secretary for my dad. He absolutely did not need a secretary. He didn't need anybody to help him with his work. I probably messed up more than I helped but my job was to answer the phone and my other job was to walk to the end of the street in our cul-de-sac, which I could do safely, and get the mail. I didn't get paid very much, but that's okay. It did give me something to put on my resume, so I had something when I was going to look for further work. I knew that the position that my dad had given me wasn't really work. So when I expressed that to him, after we'd sent off more resumes and looked around and neither one of us could find anything that anyone would hire me to do, he suggested that I start teaching violence violin lessons. I had been a professional violinist. I'd been playing concert repertoire since I was around eight or nine years old. And aside from the very occasional wedding gig or funeral that I did, I didn't know much of anything about teaching. He encouraged me. He said, well, you know, I taught piano lessons for some extra cash in junior high school and high school. So why don't you do that? Look for some friends who want to learn, put an ad up on Kijiji, see what happens. So I got my very first students. And that was incredibly exciting. 
because it didn't seem to matter that I couldn't see what I was doing. I was able to get paid. I was doing work at a consistent time every week and I was actually making a lot better money than my peers for a lot less work. Granted, I wasn't working 16 hours a week or 20 hours a week, but still it was something. It was a fantastic learning experience, but I didn't want music to be my full-time career. So I kept looking for work. Years passed teaching violin and we get to the end of high school when I started university. I thought, okay, I'm old enough now. I should be able to get some kind of part-time work to help pay for my university bills because people will take me as legitimate because I'm an adult. And I ran into the exact same problems that I had when I was a teenager. People wouldn't take me seriously. Some people were downright hostile when I tried to drop off an application. People were constantly questioning how I was going to do the work, if I was going to be able to do the work, rather than giving me the opportunity to show them I could do the work. It made me incredibly bitter. It made me incredibly frustrated. I felt worthless. I felt like nobody liked me, nobody wanted me because I was blind. I wanted to work as a healthcare aid at a long-term care facility in my community. And I went in because I understood that they did on-the-job training. You didn't need any prior knowledge and you could get some hands-on experience in the healthcare world. And the medical sphere was something I was really, really interested in. So I thought, okay, I can do this. I have decent people skills. I'm a really quick learner. There is nothing in this job that I shouldn't be able to do. So I went in and I handed in my application and they said, no, you can't do this job because you're blind. You're a liability. Our insurance definitely wouldn't cover you working here because you could hurt one of our seniors. And I was devastated. I didn't know where that came from. I didn't know how they'd come to that conclusion, but it really felt horrible. So I went somewhere else and I started looking for secretarial work because I had experience as a secretary and as a music teacher. So I figured, sure, I should absolutely be able to get a job in the summer as a temp secretary. And I went to a few job interviews and there was one in particular that even though in the moment I didn't think that they were being outright discriminatory. I found out afterwards they didn't give me the time of day because of my disability. At least that's the only thing that I can think of. I went into this interview and as I sat down, they said, it's very nice to meet you. I'm so sorry to have wasted your time coming all the way down here, but the position has just been filled. And I said, oh, okay, no, I'm, that's fine. Thank you for letting me know. And I shook their hand. I said, if any openings come up, let me know keep my resume, all the usual stuff that you do for an interview. As I was standing outside waiting for the bus, because the bus stop was just outside of the building, someone who I'd been sitting next to in the waiting room to go in and get interviewed came out after me about 15 minutes later and was all excited because they'd been given the job. This person didn't even give me the time of day didn't ask me a question, didn't give me any opportunity to speak about what I was capable of, but made clear assumptions. And maybe it's not obvious that it was absolutely my disability that did that. The only thing that would have differentiated me from that other person is the fact that I had a white cane and they didn't because I wasn't sure what I could do for myself. I wasn't able to find any kind of employment. I figured, okay, I can spend the time that I'm not making money, at least giving back to the community, at least doing something that is worthwhile because I'm not useless. I can do something and somebody's gonna see the value in that. So I applied to be a volunteer and do some work for a senior center and they brought me on after this interview process to be a volunteer to do games and recreation. And it was awesome. I didn't feel like I was a burden. Nobody treated me any different. I was able to do a lot of things that I think other volunteers weren't even allowed to do because they trusted me. They saw my value. I was allowed to 
teach a choir. I was allowed to do all kinds of different activities and donate my time and it was great. But still, it wasn't paid employment. At this point in university, I was thinking, I have to make opportunities for myself because nobody's going to give me any opportunities. So I went and I did massage therapy part-time while I was still going to university. And I completed that diploma program and I got my massage therapy license. And and that was the first time I felt true independence because nobody was telling me what to do. Nobody was telling me I couldn't do it because it was an entirely tactile based field. I was really good at what I did. I had good tactile feedback from many years of braille and just using my hands to experience the world around me. And I was able to start making some money. Massage therapy actually helped pay for my university education because I was able to create my own hours, work my own schedule and truly be myself. When I went into counseling and I was doing my practicum and I was looking for somewhere where I could get some volunteer hours in the counseling field, I ended up volunteering at a mental health center in my city. And this was definitely the best experience I have ever had with any interview process, with any volunteer work, with anywhere I have ever worked. Because when I went in for the interview, they didn't even bring up my blindness. They weren't concerned. They already had somebody with a visual impairment on staff. So I wasn't the only one and nobody batted an eye if I needed any kind of accommodations. It was really wonderful to be in a space where people were welcoming, where people saw my value. And even though I started as a volunteer, even though I needed to do those hours, even though I needed to work in that space, just to get some experience for free, they actually ended up paying me for my services because they saw how valuable a member of the team I was, which felt incredibly gratifying. And even though it wasn't a lot of money, that's not the point. It was the fact that they saw my value, they saw what I was contributing, and they felt that that deserved some kind of compensation. I know this story is bouncing around a lot and there's a lot of different things going on in a lot of different workplaces, but that's been my experience all the way through. Then I worked for a music school and while I thought it was initially going to be a really good fit for me because the boss seemed to understand all of my needs, seemed to want to accommodate me, it was definitely more lip service than delivery. I'd ask for something and it would take months if I ever got it. I would say that I am really struggling with the workload right now. I'm doing more than anyone else here. Can, can we please is just find some volunteers, find somebody to help me out. And that was always really brushed off or ignored and, and the clip corrupted. So what ended up happening is I left that position shortly after to pursue full-time self-employment. Throughout this entire experience of looking for employment, I ended up making most of my money by self-employment endeavors, by creating my own businesses, by working my own path, by creating my own opportunities because I didn't find it very easy, even with a significant amount of education behind me, to find something that was a good fit that was going to make me feel valued as an employee. So if you are going through a tough time looking for employment, if it's taking a long time, I feel your struggle. I've been there. It's a long road, but there are good people out there. There are good employers. And I think the more we can talk about our experiences, the more we can talk about our capabilities and how we are contributing valuable members of society, we can change the perception of incapability to something a little bit more balanced where we might need accommodations, but we can still do the work. So I'd love to hear your experiences in the comments down below. If you like content like this, if you've made it all the way to the end, thank you. You can always support the channel by subscribing, liking, sharing, but that's all I have for you today. Hope to see you next time. Bye for now.